Hey ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Premier League sponsored by Twitch TV, hosted by Ainge, and brought to you guys by DotacomTears.com. Today we're casting Quantic vs. Complexity Best of Two Series. And of course, I am Luminous from DotacomTears.com. Joining me alongside is the ever illustrious Nebu 1A. Indeed, and I just want to point out real fast, Venomancer yet again the first pick for Complexity here. So, Complexity of Palooza continues into its uh, second match here, although I think we're only going to get two, not all three this, this time anyway, so it's more of a doubleheader than anything, I guess. Yes, for anyone that cares, and I'm sure both Quantic and Complexity would, is that this match is where we're all going to decide who is going to take two and who is going to take three in terms of the placements of Premier League. Both these teams fighting for those slots. CLG's up there as well, and we're going to have a CLG match, I think tomorrow, uh, somewhere around that time. So these last few matches is going to decide... You know, a lot of, like, thousands of dollars are on the line. I believe the winner of this match will end up in second, and the loser will have to hope that CLG loses. Right. And then if they draw, I believe, then Quantic is the one that gets put in third and has to hope that they, uh, that, that CLG loses. I'm not 100% I'm not sure how that math works out. It's a little difficult to keep track with the a number of postponements and movements in this, this year's, premier, or this season's Premier League. Hopefully with the, uh, in ensuing seasons, we won't have to quite worry about this quite as much. Yep. Obviously, we had a little bit of a, a you know, a, a dismemberment in the second, in the second, uh, or the begin, middle of the season, where it's kind of threw everything off a little bit. But don't foresee any of those in the future. Yep, and of course, Navi is kind of the the reigning king. Uh, tomorrow, oh, yeah. we're gonna have Quantic versus Navi as well for the grand final of the defense. So we have really, really good match, and all these matches are a test for Quantic. Can they can Quantic take a best of two series from Complexity and also go up against Navi? It's going to be tough, but uh, these guys, I think they could do it. Oh, man, we should cast that defense match tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, we also Premier League match tomorrow, so. Oh, yeah. Um, I think B-Balling will be casting that tomorrow, as I recall. Yep. I'm not sure I'm not sure if B-Balling will be here or not. If those of you who haven't seen B-Balling cast before, he's another Dota Comics caster. Uh, he did cast yesterday's game, I believe. Yes, he did. Um, so, you know, if you tuned in yesterday to the Premier League, you got to, you got to listen to B-Balling. B-Balling's a cool guy. Really chill dude. He's, he's fun to hang out with. And play Dota with. Though I will say my win loss rate playing with him is like the worst ever. <laughs> Bivalin is like an auto lose for me. I don't know what the deal is, but he just makes me lose every single game. I mean, he doesn't make me lose. We just we just lose every single game together. Anyway, so again we see the CM being the second pick here. Venno CM. Team. That's that's the build. Well now they finally the big guns. Them. I like yeah. this. Well, Furion wasn't. Uh, Fury and Chen were both out of the pool, so that kind of gives them. You know, they kind of want one of those three heroes. They're looking to get Chen, Furion, or Rasa. It looks like Vino is their priority pick. Like, they seem to want Vino above all others. A uh, very interesting kind of shift in here from Complexity's picks to even just a few weeks ago. They were not picking Vino first. That was not something they were doing. Yeah, a few uh, weeks ago, it was CLG that's picking Vino. Even CLG has been shying away from that hero a little bit. Personally, I'm not too big a fan of Vino. I, I feel like he's a very defensive hero in nature. His scale really good defensively if used in lane against a gank. And also, his hero, you pick him for mostly counter-pushing. He can push. He can drop some AoE, but I feel like he just kind of... It's a slow hero in my instance, and I, I personally don't like watching it. But obviously, he, he's a key component in complexity strategy. Yeah, he, I mean, he's really strong at defending towers, and he's decent at pushing towers. He's strong in the lane. Like, he's a very good hero. Um, I personally don't like playing him because, again, he's, he's low mobility. I'm not, I'm not big on low mobility heroes, slash I'm bad with low mobility heroes. But uh, Venomancer is certainly a, a powerhouse when it comes to um, just straight up keeping creep boys off the lane. So, um, that, that, it's just interesting to see some the teams kind of shift their priorities and picks here. Uh, we did get a Windrunner runner and eventually we'll follow it up. Then of course they did get the Crystal Maiden and the Rasta and Enigma as the third pick here from Quantix. Quantum going for a bit more of a uh, team fight based strategy. You're not really going to pick an Enigma and just be like, well, he's very strong in lane. Like, yeah, he's strong in lane, but you, you're you're picking a black hole is what we're doing here. Well, uh, so we see a ban on Brewmother and Darks here. I actually what? think Enigma could be used as a pusher, and in fact, Quantix been using him as a demonic version. I'm not too sure whether they'll lane him. Uh, the laning power, like you pointed out, very, very good, although he can jungle as well. We'll see what the rest, uh, the last two hero is going to be picked. I do believe Quantic will play the Ventral Spirit as a support. I have never seen them play it as a uh, semi-carry of sorts. And Complexity's uh, semi-carry Venge last game actually wasn't all too spectacular. I mean, he got BKB. Yeah, it, but... didn't, it didn't end up paying off too much. I mean, they, yeah, they ultimately won the game, uh, but they concentrated a lot of farm on him. And, and the, kind of the problem that Ventral has is... You have to buy some tank items because you're going to be swapping yourself in bad situations. But since you're also the the kind of um, the primary XP and farm getter on your team, you also don't want to die. 
so it's it's kind of rough, and so that means you gotta you, you can't really buy a whole bunch of damage. Oh, items. we're gonna wow. see a farming tide. Quant has been playing it. this hero farms oriented. You, you rush arcane boots, you rush a pipe, and you run straight in into this complexity lineup. Who is basically magical damage? He has kraken shell and pipe up, and then you're gonna eat a ravage. Uh, and you so, can follow it up with a blink and a refresher orb if you get very fast. Well, you that's know, that's, that's <laughs> very far from the future. In terms of complexity, Zero, I think Fluff is going to be playing the Shaker, Hannah is going to be playing the Venomancer, IX Mike on the Crystal Maiden, J uh, TC going to be playing the Shadow Shaman, of course. So they're picking Jail's Hero now, so it should be some sort of carry. Uh, Doom mm -hmm. actually would be a very decent choice against this kind of playstyle. Yeah, and they really like Doom, so I feel no, like they're going to go for Weaver again. I thought for sure this was going to be Doom. Um, I mean, I guess they need a long lane soul. I mean, you could put Vino down there or try lane on bottom, but they opt yet again to drag the Weaver. So it looks like um, maybe Complexity have shifted their picks a little bit in the last week, and they're going for a lot more Vino uh, Weaver play. Not something that we've seen a bunch out of them. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll talk with some of the Complexity guys afterwards and kind of get an idea of why Weaver is the hero of choice. Um, did you see? Do you feel like Weaver had a big impact in that last game? Uh, no, not really. I mean, he was diff he's kind of difficult to kill, but he died so many times early on that it made it very hard for him to actually get much of a foothold into the game. Now, he ultimately did get a lot of items, and he was kind of their best late Oh, it was hero. like an 88-minute game or 60-minute right, right. game. Right, so. not very long. So he did ultimately end up doing something in the later phases, uh, but he had no impact of the game for literally 40 minutes, like 45 minutes. So, yeah, I think. And the impact he did have was quite negative. So, yeah, I, I don't think it actually worked out well. They may want to try it again. Maybe they feel like they'll have a lot more. Yes! Obsidian uh, Destroyer. Booyah. Our World Destroyer. And Dota uh, 2. Whatever, I don't care. Right? Obviously. That is some sick picking right there. Okay, now, for those of you who weren't watching Dota 1 a whole lot towards the towards the end of that scene, I mean, the Dota 1 scene still exists, obviously. Uh, but more and more teams are shifting to Dota 2. Towards the end of the Dota 1 scene when I was in it, uh, obviously started to get a lot more play, similar to what a Shadow Demon uh, mm -hmm. you, you would use the pool to kind of set up a lot of team fights and kind of save teammates, save yourself uh, by just a lot of general time. Uh, so it's it's really powerful in that. And of course, he's pure DPS, just a beast. And Angel plays a very strong Obzi as well. Yep, and it, in terms of an Obzi versus a Weaver matchup, Obzi has such high burst damage from his ultimate. Don't be, don't be surprised if you see Obzi just completely blow Weaver out of the water in one ultimate. A couple of stuns to lead it up, and uh, it's going to be a one-hit KO, to be honest. And I wonder how they're going to lane this. Now, of course, Obzi is one of the best solo mid hero, but nowadays we're seeing so much dueling mid that it might, he might actually have some trouble. He is hovering at the bot lane for now. and uh, I believe... I think they're going to put Enigma top winner or middle. Yeah, it looks like that maybe what they're doing. And Le Levy may not be a farmer in this game. Uh, Link may actually be playing these... Support Leviathan, since they do have Obzi Weaver, and it looks like Enigma is going to go top. So, uh, don't expect Levy to get quite as fat as he has uh, in previous games. Yep, as talked about earlier, the complexity hero playing that, and of course, uh, J.O. playing a carry, which was the Weaver that's being picked up. Might have a fight over here, as we saw one Observer War being dropped down. I don't know if this blocks the camp. I don't think it does. So, it's very interesting. They're saying that you could pull, which might not actually be a bad thing if you have a very offensive tri lane as uh, Crystal Maiden, Shaker, and the Weaver is a, a very killing trialing, so maybe they're saying you can pull, but we'll just kill you with it. Let's see how that's going to work yeah. out. Yeah, they, they did throw a ward, but again, it's not it's not the block, so it's just for vision. Does so it, it, does like it actually do? The... Maybe it does. I don't, I don't think it does. It sees, but I don't think that blocks. Okay. I think you can be looking at it and not get, not get a block here. Well, we'll find out in about 20 seconds here, so I'm pretty sure that doesn't. Um, otherwise, more teams would just use that ward. That ward would be insane. Right. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that doesn't block anything. Um, so, yeah, I think they do want to be aggressive anyway, so I think you're right. I think they don't actually mind. They want to be able to dive behind towers. They want a lot of vision of what their um, supports. They do want to see when they're pulling and maybe go after those kills. Um, so, as far as heroes go, we got Mania playing that Enigma up top. Uh, we do have Miguel in middle, Miggle in middle playing that uh, winner. Uh, we have Link playing the the uh, Leviathan. Rise is going to play that uh, Invincible Spirit. And Angel, of course, will be playing the Obsidian Destroyer, who is taking a little bit of damage here at the beginning. First barrage of nukes puts Angel about like a 75% uh, HP, and we do have the two supports coming in. So a like good old tri lane versus tri lane. In terms of uh, the offensiveness, it's going to be Radiant that has a disadvantage. And uh, what? No rules against OD, but not allowed. What? Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys, but no rule against OD, not allowed, whatever, in tournament version. What's that even allowed? mean? That means I it's have... okay, right? Oh, I see. Rise said Obzi banned, and I Mike said, is there a rule? This is a no rule against OD. Okay. okay. 
Yeah, it so makes it makes sense. The tournament turn right. reversion. So, right, right. They introduced them. I mean, it's not like the one. The, like I said about Dota Two, what I really like about it is it's very easy to just add a hero in who has existed before uh, into the into the meta game because you don't really have to worry about oh this hero's going to be broken and balanced. It's like no, they already balanced Obsidian a long time ago, or as best they could. Obviously, it's very difficult to balance heroes. But. Yeah, hopefully we don't have any uh, blo a bug or exploitation of anything of that sort. But I don't think Quantic is a team that would uh, do anything of that sort. So we should be oh, good. Definitely, definitely not. Bunch of stand-up guys. So we got JL playing that Weaver. We have IX Mike playing Crystal Maiden. Fluff and Stuff playing the Earthshaker. In middle, TC, of course, on Rasta. And up top, Hannah Montana playing that Venomancer for the complexity side. So uh, pretty standard heroes here for Scourge. Um, dire, I mean Dire, rather. Uh, kind of playing all the heroes that they're kind of known for, to be honest. Yep. Except uh, JL. I, I've only seen Weaver play, or JL play Weaver today. And obviously, that wasn't a very good game. So he's going to hope to maybe do a little bit better than that, I'm guessing. And looks like we do have an invisible tie hunter coming right in. Let's see if they're gonna set up any kind of uh, engagement. In fact, they might engagement right. Ooh, Fissure missing once again. Rise is gonna be on the other side of Fissure. Although I don't think they really could have made a kill. And even if they die on the bench, we do have a uh, disruption from Angel to really bail him out. And now with the first nuke coming off cooldown for complexity, are they gonna make another go? Yeah, he did go ahead and salve up very wisely just in case they decide to immediately go for it again because uh, one of the ways they would get a kill on this lane is if they still had a little bit of the harass damage from the previous one uh, and then went again immediately after that. Oh, should be on cooldown is that Sukuchi. As an early level has a fairly long cooldown. Another go on Angel. Can we get a Fissure Block this time? It is going to be good. Angel going to be in trouble. Can we get the first blood? Yes, we will. Crystal Maiden picks that one up. Nicely done, Ix Mike. Very happy with that kill. Is he going to upgrade a chicken or is he going to buy boots speed? Both great choices. If he buys the boots, that's going to really ensure themselves a lane dominance. Yes, she's going to secret shop or side shop. She's going to buy the boots. And an immediate smoke, they're going to go to the mid lane. Great move so far by Complexity. Yeah, they actually already upgraded the chicken before that. So nice. uh, they already had Makuro. They just went ahead and got himself some boots. So yeah, we're going to see a gang here in middle from Fluff and Ix Mike going after this, uh, going after this Windrunner Miguel in middle here. Uh, now with TC there, TC's not at level six. So there's no no sick war traps, but that's a lot of stun. Oh, they're actually going to rotate and turn back around and go back bottom. They are going to get vision of, of Link here, and it looks like Link may be not the target. They really want to get Angel, which is a much better choice. Mm. Uh, if you can keep Obzi down, you can really mitigate anything he's capable of doing because he needs to be doing DPS. Um, or he's just kind of a, a, a one-trick pony. He pulls, throws an ultimate, he's done. Yeah, once outside of the laning stage, Obsidian's just going to have such a hard time finding some room to farm. Unless your team is just playing a beautiful 4v5 game, he is so easily ganked, you could push against him. He doesn't have many weapons until he gets that 4 staff, uh, or that first big core item. Again, he doesn't have much room to farm, he doesn't have a creep clearing ability. So laning is kind of where he gets most of his initial farm. And if you shut him down here, it's going to be really, really good uh, advantage for complexity. Yeah, basically his only real uh, weapon for diving is just pulling, uh, using his his astral imprisonment, and then TPs from teammates. Like you have to have TPs in, or he's just going to die afterwards anyway. So, um, yeah, he's going to have a bit of a problem here. He is going to go ahead and keep spamming. It looks like he continues to go after the Weaver with that, trying to mitigate uh, Weaver's ability to Sakuchi. I think maybe if they can pull enough of his mana out, they're going to go for a hang on him. I'm not sure about this. I think maybe I'd be going after that Earthshaker instead. Uh, he's only got 244 mana right now. Meanwhile, on the top lane here, uh, Hannah just destroys a tower, continue putting down wards. He's level 6 already. And it looks like they might make another go here against uh, Quantic. Yeah, I don't think pulling a lot of uh, ints away from Jail is going to matter too much. Sakuchi is such a low casting uh, mana point that he, he doesn't really care. Uh, as long as he has one Sakuchi, that's, that's enough for him. Yeah, and but he can't actually pull enough mana out right now. It's only level two, so each time he does it, he's only pulling four intel. So maximum he can get three on there, which is only going to be twelve, which just is not going to be enough. Uh, whereas on Earthshaker, Earthshaker can theoretically throw two fishers down in one battle, and if you can remove him from being able to do that, that would be pretty big. Yep. Uh, up top though, Enigma does die to Venomancer, so Hannah Montana not only gets the kill but gets the tower as well. Um, so a lot of early things go in the way of complexity right now. As they got that kill on bottom and now the tower. Yeah, unfortunately for Mania, he's using the Soul Ring 40 Mana Regeneration. That also means that he's losing big chunks of HP anytime he casts it. Are we going to see another go? Fissure, it would misses once again. These Fissures, not exactly the best ones, uh, but should should be okay. As They're still doing a uh, good job in terms of keeping Angel from farming. Let's see how he's actually doing in terms of CS. 24-7, so never mind. Still very healthy yeah, CS leading. Okay. Uh, actually out farming uh, Jail. Yeah, just barely, but he's... He's a little bit behind TC and Hannah, and obviously uh, Winner is doing fine. Uh, up top Mania, though, only getting 19 CS, so not actually getting a whole lot of farm in that solo lane up top. Uh, Venomancer, Hannah and Outsider doing a very nice job right now. Actually, uh, they, the second tower might be in trouble. 
And it's it's not like uh, the teammates could actually the teammates of Quantic could actually leave the lane. If Windrunner leaves the lane to help bot or top, the mid tower gets immediately pushed down. And if uh, any of the supports leaving bot lane wall, then it's going to be a three v two situation. So in either case, Complexity winning all three lanes slowly but surely, and it really forces Quantic to make some something happen. And again, they can't really leave their lanes. Yeah, they got to start making moves. No, I don't. I don't know that uh, any move they're going to make is be very productive right now. Looks like Winner is going to go ahead and rotate up top. That's going to be the move of choice. As he power shot it to push the creep past the tower in the middle to give him a, just enough time to go up top for Hannah is going to hit a shackle here, and I believe they will get this kill. Mania taking a bunch of damage though. I think he might actually die for this. I think they will get the kill, but I think Mania may oh, just oh barely... no. Yeah, I think I think uh, Hannah made a little mistake. His wards were not uh, focused on Mania. They kind of were just targeting whatever they wanted to target, and because of that, that was the short points of damage they. Made to get that kill. Fissure not really hitting and we do have a teleportation coming in from TC. He is invisible. We'll have wards and maybe one spell. Are they gonna make a big dive? We'll see. Yeah, he's got he's got just wards and a, and a, and a spell that isn't Aether Shock yet. He's, now he's regaining mana relatively quickly with that Brilliant Star. They do have Brilliant Star level 2 and they've got the Ring of Basilia so uh, he now has both of those but no disable, no disable or no wards and a bunch of other casts. That's, that's kind of his option here. I say they just kind of push past the uh, the tower and just drop off a ward, and that's going to be a free tower. Yeah, maybe they, they want they a little bit more right behind him, kind of kind of where Levy is right now. Throw a ward right back Ooh, there. Man, if it's going to be ugly, we'll see. They're actually going to make initiation. Here comes Fluff. He's going to get a fissure that is going to hit on a Link. I guess traps Link. Immediate teleportation comes in, but the war trap gonna deter anyone coming in. That is the Windrunner traps right now. Destroy one war. Gonna be fine. I think Quantic's okay. They they really dodged the most dangerous portion. Of that engagement, and that's uh, yeah. They ended, gonna be they, they ended up making a making an invisible Rasta just not accomplish anything. Even wasted his ultimate. Now through all this, Hannah did get a little bit of farm up top, so it's not completely lost for complexity. Um, and actually, they may catch Jail here. We're gonna see a stun. Oh, he's not level six yet. He's gonna be able to survive, I think. Probably no ravage yet. Nope, no ravage. They are gonna go ahead and come around the backside, don't they? They're gonna get Jail. So never mind. That was a huge play for Quantic. Not only did they defend their tower, but they ended up getting the Weaver. Um, so big time there. Yeah, I wonder if gonna swing, uh, swing into a push, or then say, okay, here, Angel, here's some uh, farming room. Angel gonna buy Tretz right now. We'll see. Mm. Yep, he's I think gonna he tried go to. Tretz. There you go. He, he failed the first time, but he succeeded the second. I, I don't know if they can actually push this because those heroes are coming back. There's a Crystal Maiden. A Venomancer is still top. Um, Rasta doesn't have any wards, so the middle tower's not any pressure. I, I think they're just gonna go ahead and rotate back. Yep, yeah, Winner's gonna go ahead and go back middle. Yep. Meanwhile, top tower, Hannah doing a good job pushing that as well. Whew. Man, that top tower is under some, some constant duress here from uh, from Hannah. Hannah playing like a brood mother. It's like a Vino brood here. 